Google's starting off 2025 the same way they ended 2024, talking about all of the updates that are coming down the pike for Performance Max campaigns. So in this video, we want to walk through the most recent release of all the new features in Performance Max and talk about how you can use them in your account. We're going to spend pretty much the entirety of this video in this announcement post by Google, because for the most part, all of this has not released yet. You might see some of these in your accounts, but I've already checked. None of my Performance Max campaigns are showing any of these new releases just yet. So we're going to have to stick with just this post for now. As you can see by the little subheading that we've got here, we are going to have new controls and reporting improvements for Performance Max in the coming weeks and months. So let's go ahead and start diving in. We're going to scroll down to the beginning of the text here, past this nice fun little graphic. Now let's start to talk about the different announcements from Google in this post. They've made it super easy with this bulleted list, so we're going to go down the line. We're probably going to jump down to a couple of the supporting text sections in a minute. They've got some pictures that'll help kind of elaborate on these points. When that makes sense, we'll hop down to it. And the first one is one that I think everybody has been very excited about, and that is campaign level negative keywords for Performance Max. Up until now, we've had only account level negative keywords, which can be a real pain if you're also trying to run search campaigns. We did get the opportunity for brand exclusion lists, so that helped a little bit with cannibalization of our brand campaigns, but now we're going to have the control when it comes to all search keywords by being able to exclude the keywords that we're using in our search campaign from our performance max campaigns and keeping them mutually exclusive or as much as we can with the different controls that Google has. Next is going to be a change in the customer acquisition goals that we can use. This one, I'm actually going to hop into an account real quick. And here we're at the customer acquisition stage of the performance max campaign setup. We're using conversion value as the bidding strategy. And down in customer acquisition, I have the box checked for optimizing the campaigns for only new customers. And you can see that right now there's two options. First, you can bid higher for new customers than existing customers, or you can only bid for new customers. But with this new release, Google says that they're releasing an additional option that is going to manifest in this customer acquisition setup somewhere. And that's going to be that high value mode. It's going to allow you to optimize for only new customer acquisitions and finding higher value customers, not just more customers overall. My guess is you're going to have to have a decent amount of first party data being fed back into Google, either to start with to know who your customers are and who the high value ones are. And then also, as you continue to gain new customers, Google's going to need to know the values associated with them. So this one might take a little bit more data being pushed back into Google to work better. But for those of you trying to get high value customers, this could be a great option. The third change. Brand exclusions are now for different formats in retailer campaigns with product feeds. This is when we're going to hop down into the supplemental text for. For this change, brand exclusions are going to be a more specific exclusion than they used to be. Brand exclusions used to apply to both search and shopping ads, but in this new change, you'll be able to use brand exclusions for just search so you can keep your branded traffic on your shopping ads. I personally find this to be a pretty insightful change from Google. They say that you want to keep your shopping ads in place for brand terms, which makes sense. Most of the text and images and all that stuff for those comes from your product feed. So in a lot of ways, it's really automated. But with search campaigns, you can get really customized and run lots of different tests just right within the interface without having to change anything with your product feed. So likely you want to test a lot more with search brand campaigns than you would with shopping because it's just easier. It's quicker to do. So with this brand exclusion, you can keep your shopping ads running, not have your search ads through Performance Max run for your brand campaigns so that you can then run branded ads from a regular search campaign. Effectively, this allows you to just take out branded search, but leave brand shopping so that it can be done elsewhere in the account. Moving on down the list. Now for users with product feeds, you can use a URL contains rule for your campaigns. I've always been a big fan of using any sort of contains logic, whether it's for building audiences, for building any of the dynamic page targets in dynamic search ads campaigns. I just find the contains option to be a lot more flexible than any of the others. So I think this will be a very useful tool for a lot of folks running anything on Performance Max. Next, we're going to get demographic exclusions and development device targeting. Let's hop down to the supporting text for a little bit more details on that. With the demographic exclusions, you'll now be able to exclude certain age brackets, 
based on what Google normally has as the preset groups. In this example, they have the 18 to 24 or 65 plus group, but I think most of them usually follow about a 10 year gap. So there's also a 25 to 34 group, 35 to 44, so on and so forth up to 65. So you'll be able to exclude those age groups of people from your Performance Max campaigns. You're no longer going to have to be opted into all of them by default. And the next change, we're going to be able to target our Performance Max campaigns by device, just the same way we can do with just about every other campaign type on Google Ads. As you can see here, if you're interested in either of those, you need to reach out to your Google Ads account team or Google Ads support to sign up for those. Let's go ahead and just stay at this part of the page and we'll just scroll down for the last three different pieces we've got. There are going to be two new changes to the search themes that you utilize in Performance Max. The first is you're going to be able to see insights based on the search themes that you've used. First is going to be in addition to the search term insights report for Performance Max. As you can see down in this image here, you're able to see the search category, clicks, search volume, and there's going to be a new column that says source. You can see the top line item here says URLs, creative assets, and more. This means that Google matched to that search category just based on your website and what the content was. But the second one down below, Living Room Furniture, also has a section that says search themes, as does the two below it, Home Office and Kids Rooms. So moving forward, you'll be able to understand the search categories in your Performance Max campaigns and whether they came from Google's automated targeting and understanding about your site, or if they came from your search themes or some combination of both. The next one sticks with search themes, but they're trying to give a little bit more insight into whether they think your search themes will be useful or not. It's literally called a search themes usefulness indicator. Now, as I said, all of this is a new announcement. We haven't seen any of these actually in an account. We don't know how these work, but one thing I want you to know that I think at this point in time could get misconstrued, usefulness in this instance does not mean good performance. As you can see in this little blurb up here, this reporting insight is trying to help you understand if the search themes you provided are driving incremental traffic on top of what you would have already gotten through Performance Max, or if you would benefit from updating your search themes. So even though these have a nice little green arrow pointing up to say that something is useful, all it's saying is that it's finding additional traffic. It does not mean this will perform well or this is a good search term just means this is helping Performance Max reach beyond what it already would with your campaigns. Now, for those of you who use search themes because you think Google is not categorizing your site properly, this is probably a great indicator because now you're directing Google closer to the search themes that you want. But for those of you who are already hitting the mark performance wise with Performance Max, this indicator might not be something that you strive for. Just make sure that your search themes actually make sense. And just know that this usefulness indicator only means that you're expanding beyond what you were already targeting in the first place. Now, the last adjustment that Google is making is improved asset group reporting. Google is now going to give you more insights into how your asset group performed based on different conversions by device, time and other categories. They also are going to help you share this information outside of just the Google Ads user interface. And they've also made this data downloadable so that you don't have to use it only in the Google UI, which has been a bit of a pain point up until now. They left this one pretty vague, just says device, time, and more. We'll see what the and more means, but my guess is that since they use device and time, those are probably the two splashiest ones. Can be really useful, especially now that we can start targeting our Performance Max campaigns by device. If all of a sudden you find there's a terrible category, you can just turn it off for those. Don't target it. But that brings us to the end of the list of the new product releases for Performance Max as of late January 2025. It was just a month ago that we were going through all of the changes that Google announced for 2024. And there was a big category just about Performance Max in that one. If you're interested in that video, you can check it out at the top of the screen right now. But even though the initial launch of Performance Max was met with very mixed reviews, especially from seasoned advertisers who felt like it was a control grab from Google and that they were going to turn the entire platform into a black box, all of their actions from the last at least one year and now one month into 2025 speaks to the fact that they're at least trying to meet us halfway. 
They've given a lot more controls on Performance Max. They're giving a lot more insights. Hopefully they listened to all of our complaining and they're going to keep rolling out new tools, new features, new ability to use Performance Max. Because in the end, if everybody sees good performance with Performance Max, everybody's going to use it it'll be a win-win. So hopefully you've enjoyed this rundown. Hopefully you're excited about some of these changes coming down the pike. If you've got any additional questions about these new releases or anything else for Performance Max campaigns and Google Ads, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.